Hello and Kira everyone, Royden here from Primal Fires. I uh, just want to take a moment to talk about the refractory grade material that we use on the inner dome. So I quite often get asked questions like uh, how does it compare directly with a traditional brick that you might use in an oven. So what I've done is I've just made up a, uh, a sample of the material out of a mould the same size as a brick and I'm going to put them in the oven here and I'm going to compare them. I'm going to look at different temperatures over a period of time. So first thing we want to look at is the thermal mass of the material. So I'm going to put the uh, weigh them up, have a quick look. You'll see uh, the fire brick standard weight 4.2, 4.3 kilos. Here's a block of the refractory castable material and we're looking at about 4.7 kilos. So straight away, the material itself is heavier. So this was made about sort of six months ago, so it's nice and dry, so there's no, no sort of water sitting in it or anything. So it's a, a good comparison straight away. Now I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna put them at the back of the oven, and I'm gonna have a fire, and over a period of uh, three or four hours, I'm just gonna measure temperatures, then I'm gonna pull them out, and I'm gonna sit them on the front here, and I'm just gonna have a look at the temperature and how, they, how that might drop over a period of a few hours. Now this video is in no way about dishing brick ovens. Brick ovens are fantastic. Brick is, fire bricks are an amazing product for ovens. But I want to take some of the doubt out of your mind about refractory castable and prove to you that its heat retention is just as good as a fire brick. And look, that's what the rest of the video is going to prove to you. So we're going to see that both of them have the same ability to store and release heat. So while that's booting up, let's have a quick talk about the base ingredients for this castable material because it's not sort of something that you find in a normal hardware store, so it might be not something you're familiar with. Uh, it's basically a calcium aluminate based cement that is the key ingredient. So it's a product that is hydraulic setting, so it uh, uses water and a chemical reaction to set up hard, so very similar to Portland cement, but the big difference is it can actually handle high temperatures, so uh, an incredible range, you know, 1000 degree plus stuff. So it's, it's really an incredibly versatile product when you mix it with the right aggregates. So the second part of the castable material is using an aggregate that you can actually that can actually cope with the heat as well. So uh, there's lots of materials out there that you think might be able to cope with it but they can't. So it's important to get that blend correct when they make a castable mix. Now calcium aluminate cements were actually invented in the 1800s so they've been around for a very very long time. Uh, they did have a bit of a check in history in structural engineering uh, so um, they were used in a similar way to Portland cement but they didn't sort of go to distance but when it comes to high temperature applications are absolutely brilliant and a, a mainstay of the whole I guess you call refractory sort of industry. Uh, they use extensively uh, in pizza ovens all around the world. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will pour them into molds and uh, and give them a bit of a shake and next day pops out a part of a pizza oven that's used on the inner dome or whichever part they want to use. Uh, they're used in fireplaces and kilns and uh, furnaces, all sorts of different applications because they're just so usable. Uh, in, the, uh, in a standard brick oven you will quite often see the very top of the dome is actually a castable material. So it's kind of very tricky to build those tiny little sections up the top so uh, using a square brick and a round hole I guess you'd say so what they do is pour the very top of the dome in a castable material so very well proven and uh, what we're doing is uh, using a cardboard mold to put this castable refractory material over the top of to build a fantastic pizza oven so instead of spending three or four weekends building a, a brick dome with intricate little pieces you're smashing it out in a few hours so that's the key difference uh, for the outside the ovens look very very similar uh, but the only main difference is that the inside is uh, what's called a monolithic pour so it's a, a one-piece pour that goes on on the over that cardboard mold so over the years I've had a lot of customer feedback, uh, people that have had brick ovens in the past and they've built uh, one of my oven packs and the feedback has been that they're on a par. So they haven't noticed any particular difference in them, they just they just love the, the fact that it was so much easier to build. So I sell a lot of these oven packs to bricklayers, uh, they just see the genius in them because even, even for them, even with skilled, it just takes a long time to build an oven or a dome out of bricks. Hey, okay, let's do our first check. So on the right hand side we have our fire brick. 307 and on the left hand side we have our refractory mortar. 350 so it's sitting about 50 degrees higher but look this isn't a, a science lab so uh, it could have had a bit of ember sitting on it or something like that so the only way to truly know is we'll come back a bit later and check again. I started the fire with just an old sort of pellet I had lying around but now I've put some beautiful dry gum in there and I've actually buried those bricks under the wood so we're going to have a huge amount of heat pumping out of that, uh, that wood very shortly. 
So I can actually see the, uh, the, the bricks in there have actually cleaned up quite nicely, which means they must be over sort of 350 degrees because that's uh, at the point when the, uh, the soot starts burning off them. So let's have a quick look and see. Okay, we are testing the fire brick now. About 350 and moving on to the middle. About 380. Okay, so it's sort of leveled out, but um, I'm going to keep the fire going because what I want to do is I just want to saturate them both with as much heat as possible just to give them both a fighting chance to uh, to impress us. I've been in here about four hours now, so I'm going to do a quick temperature check. About 400. Yep, about 400 degrees. Yep, looks like the front of that fire brick might be slightly higher. But all are all, uh, all relatively uh, relatively close in temperature, so I'm going to get those out now. Um, <laughs> use a pair of welding gloves and basically do it very very fast. But uh, so I'm going to put the uh, the bricks down on these off fire brick offcuts on the ground, and uh, that'll just isolate them a little bit, and then we'll uh, measure the temperature as time goes on. So we are at the 10 minute mark. Just doing a quick test. 253. Hope you can see that. 282 so a slight difference there depending on where you point it 260 so yeah very close very similar so uh, we'll check again at the 30 minute mark right everyone we're at the 30 minute mark so let's do a bit of a read here about 165 somewhere in there 170 so very very close looks like it's an even race at the moment We've hit the famous one hour mark, so let's have a look here. 105, something in there. Look at that, virtually exactly the same. Moment of truth, we are at the two hour mark. 52 degrees, 53 degrees, so just about exactly the same. So just goes to show the heat retention of these two products is about exactly the same. The race is over. We've proven that both materials are on a level playing field. So I hope that alleviates some of the doubt in your mind about this product you may not have heard about before and to realise that it is just a fantastic way of building an oven in your own backyard. Get stuck in. Take on the adventure.